Uh, thanks for joining us. We're here in the dressing area of the Elbow Room, uh, ahead of the Chicago Roots Collective Showcase tonight. Uh, joining us, we have Aubrey and Jake from Glen Denning, Danny, uh, future laureates, along with James, and Matthew, right. <laughs> Mike Mangione from Mike Mangione in the Union, uh, Trevor Jones, and Pete Manhart from Molehill. Uh, and I'm going to let Danny introduce a little bit about what the collective is about. Sure. The Chicago Roots Collective is uh, a community of bands. It started with ten bands in the genres of folk, Americana, uh, roots music, um, and basically it's expanded to include a lot more bands, and it's basically about sharing resources, helping each other out, and the reason we're here tonight is for the third annual Chicago Roots Collective Festival. And one thing that I like about Chicago music in particular is that a lot of bands seem to be supporting each other as opposed to competing against one another, like I've seen in other places. So maybe uh, Pete and Trevor, maybe you guys can talk a little bit about uh, that sense of community that the collective is uh, instigating. Um, yeah, totally. That's, um, you know, in a lot of other cities it's pretty cutthroat, like um, for instance, uh, New York, um, you know, you go to a venue and a lot of times bands don't even talk to each other, it's just, you know, a band comes in, brings their fans in, they play. They leave, their fans leave. Next band comes in, it's like a factory almost. And in Chicago, what you get a lot more is, um, you know, you'll get these cohesive bills put together um, lots of times by a certain band um, or a group of bands will just get together and put these nights together of shows. And uh, what the Chicago Roots Collective is, is really started as 10 bands and now it's way more than that, but it's all of us as friends kind of putting, um, putting all these shows together and, and kind of helping each other, um, you know, for shared success. We're all, we, we're all really hard-working bands, and we know we'll all promote all these shows really hard, so it's just like a good thing. And Mike, you actually, you spend most of your time in Milwaukee, right? What? When I'm sleeping, yeah. When you're sleeping. <laughs> so how is, do you feel like there's a difference between uh, what goes on in the Chicago music scene as opposed to uh, Milwaukee or other cities that you've been in? Uh, Milwaukee music scene has a little more mustache, I'd say. Uh, a little more mullet, and, uh, more Packer fans. Um, no, actually, uh, I'd say both scenes are, are pretty similar as far as Chicago, Milwaukee go. Um, there's, I think, all over in this, in the, in the, uh, in the independent level, there's there's a lot of bubbling in in, in the markets across the United States, um, pockets all over. So it's pretty comparable from what I've experienced, you know. Do you still feel like you're pretty connected uh, with everybody in Chicago, even though you don't spend as much time here as the others do? I like to lead them on and, and make them think that I'm connected. <laughs> I don't really like anybody. <laughs> so no, I, yeah, I mean, there's, and especially with the internet now, I think uh, there's there's a way to stay stay uh, uh, connected with everybody, and um, and uh, it, it really does feel like a brotherhood. And for, for Danny and you guys, uh, you kind of were at the outset of the whole thing uh, with the creation of it. Do you feel like the way it's growing and everything that's happened since uh, that point when you decided to do this uh, has grown into what you thought it could be, or do you think it could go a lot further? Uh, I think both. I think it's, for starters, it's, it's totally exceeded our expectations. I think it's grown a lot organically, and I think a lot of it has to do with word of mouth. I think our fans have been a big reason why it's continued to grow year after year. I think it's been a lot of intentionality, too. I think the fact that, like Peter alluded to, you know, we've done a lot of uh, intentional bills that sound alike, you know, bands are consistent and sounding from, from venue, you know, band to band, that we're trying to be smart about the business end and promoting uh, the numbers for the shows. I mean, that's something that has allowed us to develop a reputation in the city. But yeah, we can definitely grow. I think uh, areas we can grow will continue to get more out-of-town bands in the mix. I mean, if you look at Mike Van Jody and the Union, they're a model in the sense that they're touring the world. And I think that's where a lot of the bands in the Chicago Roots Collective want to go. A lot of the bands playing this festival tonight want to go there someday. So we want to get more bands that are playing in their whatever, Boston, you know, Cincinnati, San Francisco, whatever, in the mix. You know, so that we can continue to, to put on display what we're doing in Chicago, but also have that 
opportunity in other markets as well. What's, what's nice about that too is that there are, like I was talking about the pockets in, in the different markets, there are, we, there are carbon copies of us in every city that are looking for that kind of a relationship and I think the key is finding uh, finding those people to work with. I think in, in the industry of independent music, there's so much entropy and wasted energy uh, just trying to get a footing. Um, if you can focus on finding the like-minded people uh, and work specifically with them, uh, you can go a lot farther, a lot faster as far as the foothold in that market than just trying to, you know, call the venue and get in. So it's it is it's so possible to connect with uh, other people all over the, the market now. Everybody's wanting that kind of relationship. Yeah. Let's just, on a grander scale of, you know, everybody can jump in on this, uh, the idea of independent music has changed dramatically just in the past couple of years. It's gone from, you know, just bands that aren't on major labels that are messing around to bands that, you know, three people in Chicago have heard of but they're an indie band and they'll continue to grow due to the internet and all that. Do you guys think the music industry can sustain how it is now or do you think it's eventually going to be no major labels? What do you guys think? Well, we're down to three now, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually talking to a friend of mine about this and uh, it's scary with what's happening with bands where even if you are to get signed on to a label, they're doing things where uh, if you sign on, they will pay for you to make your music, but you have to pay them back everything. And if you don't become big, it's not good for you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's almost better to do what we're doing and play as much as we can in places, uh, you know, especially with the internet, it helps out. But getting signed is definitely harder than it used to be. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think we're living in the age of the music fan yeah. right now. Yeah. I think to receive music, you know, it's so, it's out there. You can get it any way you want. You don't have to go through radio like you used to, you know, and you can get it on the internet, you can get it online, you know, whatever. I don't know, what do you think, Pete? Trevor was actually, we were actually just talking about this before coming here, about yeah. um, what I'm, labels even do for bands anymore. Yeah, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of things have changed, but nothing's changed that you still need to make kick-ass music. And if you don't make good music, yeah. nothing else matters. All the promotion, all the blood, sweat, and tears, nothing matters. So, um, but I was listening, just listening to an interview with the manager of OK Go and Muse, which is kind of an interesting combination, having those two managers in the same room. But um, they, they run into uh, a lot of the same problems, obviously on a much different scale, like OK Go, um, one of the biggest ways they make, uh, they make their money um, is through licensing, um, syncing rights, but then you have a band like Muse who also makes a lot of money through syncing rights and they own everything as far as syncing goes. The label doesn't take a cut, um, the only people that takes cuts are the artists and then the management team. So. Um, the label has nothing to do with that. So, what the label does now is not uh, not what they used to. Uh, you don't need them for distribution. You don't need them for uh, a lot of things. So, it's a bold new world out there. So, going along with that, would you guys, if it were to occur, let's say Mike Mangione writes a song and it just takes off, it gets a million downloads and it's on the top forty radio and all that. Would you? Go along with it. Is that something that you would want, or would you rather stay I've wanted true that. to yourself? I've and... wanted that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. I mean, uh, let's be honest. We want to have sustainability and be able to do it. In order to do it, you need a fan base. Um, you know, uh, I I always say it, there's six billion people on the planet. I just need to find the ones that like what I'm doing, and. Uh, I'm going to focus on that, you know, as far as, um, it doesn't take many to sustain, you know, if you really find like true fans that will invest in what you're doing and are interested in what you're doing, it doesn't take that many, um, it takes more than your family, I, I know that. <laughs> and your college friends. College friends, <laughs> well, definitely, because that dies, <laughs> after two years after graduation, yeah. they're done, so. Yeah, well, the vast majority of people either aren't going to like you or aren't going to care. 
That's you know, so we're focusing on the people who do. Yeah, you're right. You know, just honing in on them and trying to grow with them. I think that's the way to go about it. But I think, it, what's the intention of the artist? I think that's the, that's the biggest question. What is your intention? Is your intention to create uh, music that comes from you to build a, a communion connection with, with fans? Um, if that's the case, no matter what happens, if you stay true to that, it's a good thing. Even if it's a million you know, downloads and, and everybody puts their money in the bucket, if that's your focus, I always look at it like icons and, and idols. You know, if, if you become an idol, um, you're, you're self-absorbed. But if you try to become an icon and make, you know, be something that points to something bigger, you know, like a communal relationship with fans, then it becomes something bigger than you, bigger than the fans. It becomes uh, something brand new that you can't have, and it becomes very genuine. And if that's your focus, then I think no matter what you do and no matter who pours into it, it will be, it'll be a good thing. Just getting back to kind of that sense of community that would create. Uh, Glenn Denning, I think, is the newest band uh, <laughs> to be uh, part of this. And uh, what have you guys, I mean, since you've joined the collective, have you noticed that you're getting more people at your shows, that more people are interested or checking out your website? Or There's definitely been a little spike in it. We are brand new. I mean, we're still inside a year, and we've been fortunate to do um, some pretty big things as a new band, uh, a lot of that is kudos to, we have a really awesome following of people, we have a really tight-knit group of friends that have been really supportive and come out to damn near every show that we've had, and then, you know, the idea is then just to pick up, um, you know, more fans along the way, and hopefully, you know, it kind of snowballs and goes, but uh, I think we're just really fortunate to be a part of this so far, and it's, it's nice to meet other musicians that are not only, like, talented musicians, but good people, and kind of had their head on straight, there's not really any egos here. And it seems like if anybody has any kind of questions, like people are really receptive and like, like you said, as a community looking looking to help each other out instead of compete for you know dollar signs. So, so next year when we're coming up to the Chicago Roots Collective Showcase Four, <laughs> do you think it's going to be a much bigger affair? Do you think we're going to add? I think we have some like seventy five. Or some of yeah. the performances this year? And it's close to 100 musicians over the course of the weekend this year. Yeah, I think so. Why not? It's crazy. Go big or go home, right? <laughs> I think we should reduce musicians but make them all bigger in stature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out, obviously. <laughs> but it's better for everybody when people are bigger. Yeah. yeah. I feel. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys so much for taking the time. I know uh, you guys are all playing tonight, so I won't hold you up any longer. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, 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 thanks for coming up, and we'll be out there tonight. Do you want to acknowledge the fans in the audience? Yeah. 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 Plug your side, huh? Uh, they, they'll see it when I put it there.